Hi, welcome to my Juniper SL Gateway demo. Uh, in my last video, I showed you how you would initially set up the Juniper SL Gateway and log in as a test user. So if you haven't already seen that video, it would be a good intro before moving on to this video. Um, the Juniper SL Gateway is by far the most granular and enterprise product out there for remote access. So there's just a ton of features and ways of configuring the product. So this video we will only be scratching the surface to get you started. Uh, the video will consist of showing you some of the main features of the gateway as well as how I have set it up with an Active Directory server. So um, the four key areas we will be looking at today is user roles, resource profiles, authentication servers and signing policies. Uh, between these four areas once uh, set up uh, you'll be able to see how uh, signing pages are created, authentication servers are integrated uh, different types of user groups are created as well as uh, providing resources to the user so once they are logged in as a remote user they can see all their resources to their uh, corporate for their corporate network so what we can do is log in and start the demo itself um, so we log in with the IP address and because we're logging in from the administration side of things we've got to specify admin and this part you'll see very shortly in the demo as well And we come to the main uh, page of the Juniper SL Gateway. So on the left hand side is where you do all your configuration. Uh, first you've got your system settings, your major system configuration such as network, uh, clustering, logging and monitoring. Authentication is where we will be uh, spending most of our time. So I'll show you the signing policies. The endpoint security policies are, is for host checking, so ensuring the client is up to date before allowing them access. Uh, authentication servers, so I'll be showing you this very shortly. Administrator section is where you'd configure uh, different levels of administrators uh, to log into the box to uh, administer the SLVPN. Uh, users, so this section we'll be having a look at quite a lot of this uh, very shortly. And maintenance is for backup, import, export, uh, troubleshooting, doing TCP dumps, etc. So the first area we're going to be uh, covering off is user roles. So um, user roles is uh, here is where we define uh, session parameters, personal settings such as bookmarks, access features such as uh, web file applications, talent, etc., and restrictions, conditions that should be met before uh, you have access to this role. Uh, to have access to this role. So uh, user role is, is pre-configured with one user role called users, which is this one. And this user has got access, enable settings for all these areas here. Um, and the one that I've created is called the test user role. So test user role, and if we scroll down, it's got the options enabled for session options and user interface options. So these, these area here will uh, take uh, uh, effect, which is, uh, what I will show you very shortly. Uh, session options and user interface options here. And the uh, access features enable our web and uh, Windows file uh, access. So the web has three bookmarks, the uh, Windows file has one bookmark set up. So if we scroll back up, uh, I'll show you the user interface options. So this is the area you'd come to after you log into the VPN SSL box. Uh, what I've done is taking the Juniper logo off and uh, put uh, my logo on so this we will see once we log in as a test user um, so you can configure all that from here uh, subheaders, uh, start page, uh, bookmarks so you can arrange the uh, the heading sections uh, if you've got all these resources you can have them in different order etc The uh, uh, how users request for help that's configurable the user toolbars which are on the right hand side of the page uh, you can configure what users can see uh, on this section here as well. Uh, browsing toolbars, so you can configure all this. So there's quite a lot to configure. And uh, we'll move on to session options. And so if the user is idle for 10 minutes, uh, you can configure the session lifetime. So if they're idle for 10 minutes, it will log them out. Um, they will have a maximum session length of 60 minutes. Uh, whether they're, act uh, they're active or not and it will log them out and it will remind them five minutes before doing so. So this is all configurable. Uh, we can also configure from here 
is uh, session timeout warnings, uh, remote sessions if there are remote uh, users, uh, persistent sessions, uh, browser session cookies, um, password caching. Uh, so there's quite a lot here as well to uh, customize. Uh, restrictions. So uh, you know the user will be allowed based on uh, source IP addresses, where they're coming from, or what browsers they're using, uh, whether they have uh, a particular certificate installed on their uh, client, or what the host uh, checker has come back with. So the host checker will uh, check the uh, client for uh, antivirus uh, is up to date, or the client operating operating system is up to date, or they have a certain file running on their system. Um, okay, so this is the user role area. The next area we'll look at is the resource profiles, which is here. Um, so the resource profiles as is is a, a replacement for resource policies because it does uh, the stuff in resource policies. It does all the stuff in resource policies as well as uh, other things within the profile itself. So it's kind of a, an area where you can configure lots of things for resources in. Uh, one sort of step uh, which uh, enables uh, a lot e ease of management is a lot better um, so resource profiles is where uh, you can control access to resource uh, access resources such as uh, web file telnet virtual desktop etc uh, and they uh, contain uh, resource policies uh, within the profiles themselves which I'll show you very shortly uh, and, and here's where you can uh, specify the role assignments and then use the bookmarks required to provide access to individual resources. Um, so if we go to the web one, we can see our three resources. Uh, they don't go into anywhere, they're just there just to show you. When I log in as a test user, we'll be able to see these three resources here. So if we go to test internal three, uh, here's the resource I've created. I've uh, put in a base URL and when you specify the URL, it automatically creates your bookmark as well. So the resource policy portion is here, so you can do this in the policy. So it's a web access control policy. Uh, here's the URL. You can also deny it from here as well. Going into roles is uh, where I've specified my test user role. So uh, this resource policy uh, resource profile belongs to uh, for the test user role. So if we go to bookmarks, is here's where the automatic bookmark is created. So you don't need to create this because it's created from the first page. It's here, and um, here's where you can also specify this particular bookmark, who it's uh, who it belongs to, which uh, role it belongs to, so who should see it. Um, the next section is authentication service. So you've got um, your uh, authentication servers defined here. If you click on new server, you can specify the server. It could be a local system authentication server, uh, any server, a server, LDAP server, radius server, active directory, certificate server. So lots of different options for different authentication services. Um, you've got your predefined system local server where you can define local uh, uh, user accounts as well as your administrator uh, user accounts here. So your administration uh, administrator authentication server. So the one I've created is the test Active Directory server. So I've integrated my Active Directory um, and I'll show you my Active Directory environment as well very shortly. So I've created this and this will integrate with user realms which is the next section. So the next area is user realms. Um, so in the user realm you'd specify authentication server. So I'd specify my test Active Directory server here. Um, an authentication policy which specifies uh, security requirements that need to be met before the service will authenticate a server for verification. Also, uh, role mapping rules is done for me, which are conditions a user must meet for the SSL service to map a user to roles. And uh, these conditions are based on information returned by, uh, for example, person's username or certificate attributes. The one I've used is uh, group memberships, and there's also other criteria as well. Uh, so it's pre configured with one. Um, um, user realm which is called users uh, and this predefined user realm uses the system local authentication server um, so if we go to mine the, the one that I've created is the test user realm 
and you can see the authentication server I've integrated it with which is the test active directory server you can also specify additional authentication server so user may have to specify a two-factor authentication uh, um, code for example uh, the authentication policy so where the, the you know allow or disallow based on the source IP address the browser certificate password host checker limits um, so before you allow them authentication they've got to meet these requirements um, so the role mapping is the main area I wanted to show you so it says here specify how to assign roles to users when they sign in users that are not assigned a role will not be able to sign in so mine is when users meet these conditions so user is a member of domain users uh, from the domain JAFSEC uh, assign these roles test user role now if we go into my AD environment Yeah, so we can see my AD environment, JAFSEC and an OU called staff uh, and a test account, which is test one, which we will be logging in with very shortly. And it's a member of domain users. So we can minimize this. If we go into groups as well, uh, you can see the selected group is domain users. How you would uh, specify this is hit groups, hit search. And you can see all my domain groups it's all it's all pulled from my um, active directory environment and the last section i want to show you is signing policies so here's where you define the signing pages and the signing policy itself and the urls um, so if we start with signing pages so this is the page so when you hit the url uh, when you specify the url uh, you come to a specific signing page and the one that I've created is the test signing page so you've got your default and your meeting signing page and then you've got your the test signing page the one that I have created and what I've done just to differentiate it from the default um, I've put in uh, the company logo uh, so me on logo um, so you can customize the text here uh, welcome to you know your company name uh, please sign in blah 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 um, custom error text mess uh, error messages so if they, they, they have an error uh, miss certificate it will uh, notify them uh, you can also have pre-authentication notifications or post-authentication notifications so you're not allowed to sign in if they decline etc um, the notifications is done from uh, the notifications area here uh, and you create a new authentication here so if we go to signing policies, so now that we've created this test signing page, uh, we need to uh, connect it to a, a signing policy URL. So we logged in as an admin, admin so we specified the IP address and then for slash admin, and then we got into this area uh, to uh, administer the uh, VPL, uh, VPN SL box. Uh, the user's URL is without the admin part, the default one, and the test one is the one that I've created here. So if we go into the test, uh, and I've integrated it with a test signing page, which has got the customized logo on, and um, you can specify the authentication will be here as well. So pick, so I've just put both of them in the predefined one, the user realms, and the one that I've created, test user realms. So when we're logging in, we can see uh, these, and we can uh, pick between them. So if we go back to signing uh, policy and um, yeah, so there's a couple other options here such as enable multi-user sessions. So one user can log in from let's just say their laptop and their iPad at the same time and it won't uh, fight over the uh, single session, it will allow them. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's just quickly, briefly go overview, uh, go back and have a look at what we've created and done and then we'll log in as the test user and see if it works so the first thing we did is define a user role so I've got my test user role which enables me access to uh, web uh, file shares uh, Windows file shares so I've got three bookmarks for web so we'll see the three bookmarks we'll see the single bookmark for Windows file shares uh, the three bookmarks are here for the uh, web And the file shares, there should be one bookmark here, 
uh, test file results. And then we defined a uh, user uh, profile as well. Uh, so if we go to web, we can see the three there. Uh, the I don't think the file one is here because it's been created within uh, the bookmark area itself as opposed to as a profile uh, which which you've already just seen user profile test user role um, files windows bookmark and it's here uh, and then we defined our authentication server uh, the test actor directory server and what we did then is we integrated it into a user room called test user room and here it is test actor directory server and I've already mapped it to uh, groups uh, with uh, domain user group membership um, and finally we created a signing page uh, called um, test and we'll test this uh, in the next uh, minute so if we um, open up another browser and we can uh, test the uh, signing of the test user. So if we log in as the default signing page, which is 10.10.0.30, we come to the default page, which is the Juniper logo. But I want to log in with my test account and I also want to see the, uh, the logo that I put in place instead of the Juniper. Uh, networks logo and that signing page was ps colon slash slash 10.10.0.30 forward slash test enter so there you go so I've got my logo uh, and I've got the options to pick between different user rooms so if I log in so I'm not logging in as an admin I'm logging in as the test one account And there you go again my um, logo with a yellowish background and you can see my uh, resources here okay so that's just a, a quick overview of the Juniper SL VPN appliance it's a, a quick overview to enable you to get started uh, create users create resource profiles integrate it with your active uh, directory service and enable you to uh, log into the uh, the Juniper SL appliance to access your corporate resources so there's uh, quite a lot of uh, settings it's a very granular solution but it's a very uh, powerful uh, box to use so it, you can very easily get lost uh, your way around the Juniper SL box uh, but it, the more you play with it the more you will uh, get used to it and it will become uh, quite easy for you so uh, that's it for me today and I'd like to thank you for viewing thank you